Elon Musk just officially revealed the new Starship. And wow, the holy mother of all rockets is here. Its payload is 250 to 300 tons to orbit in expendable mode and enables around 6,000 tons of liftoff mass. This is even getting close to the legendary specifications of the mighty Sea Dragon. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In reply to Everyday Astronaut's tweet about this new video comparing Starship to N1, the tweet has a screenshot showing Starship with a 150 ton payload to orbit and 5,000 ton liftoff mass, side by side with N1 with 95 ton payload to orbit and 2,735 tons of liftoff mass. Musk said Starship payload is 250 to 300 tons to orbit in expendable mode. Improved thrust and ISP, or specific impulse, from Raptor will enable around 6,000 ton of liftoff mass. Well, if this is real, that is crazy. Starship will be a behemoth in terms of cargo in space. It's about three fully loaded shuttles and about 12 shuttle payloads. To imagine, as of January of 2023, SpaceX has launched 1,272 metric tons of mass to orbit. This means it would take about five fully expendable Starship launches to launch all the mass that SpaceX has ever put into orbit. Additionally, the International Space Station weighs about 420 metric tons, or around one and a half fully expendable Starships. As a result, Starship could build space stations cheaper and quicker. Every module on the ISS is hundreds of millions of of dollars of engineering effort to make it light enough and strong enough and so on. They do this because launch costs were prohibitive per kilogram before now. What does a station module look like if you don't need to worry so much about mass to orbit costs? You could use heavier, cheaper materials that are quicker to produce. You could launch sooner, more often. While unconfirmed, this could be thanks to the Raptor 3. The SpaceX Raptor 3 was recently test fired and reached 18% more thrust than a Raptor 2. The Raptor 2 had 25% more thrust than the Raptor 1 and it was 20 percent lighter. SpaceX will remove gimballing on the outer engines and remove the rocket shroud where possible as well. It's likely that, besides increasing thrust, that SpaceX continue to reduce the weight by another 200 kilograms. This would mean reducing the weight of the rocket by 8 tons for the 40 engines in the first and second stages of the Super Heavy Starship. In short, Hopefully Musk won't have any confusion here. In any case, Starship is extraordinarily ambitious. Even before considering the unproven concepts of orbital propellant refilling and full rapid reusability that are central to the full system, Starship is indeed a beast. The rocket measures 120 meters or around 390 feet tall and is theoretically capable of producing up to 7,590 tons or around 16.7 million pound force of thrust at sea level. It's larger, taller, heavier, and more powerful than any other launch vehicle in history. 33 Raptor 2 engines power Starship's super heavy booster, which is also more than any other rocket. Once optimized, SpaceX says that Starship can launch up to 150 tons or around 330,000 pounds to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take only hours enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines and has just 10 of those engines compared to Starship's 39 Raptors, producing about 10 times less thrust at liftoff and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expending its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was around $15 million, which is impressively low, but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches, and there there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable even if they are recovered. Next up, the Vulcan Centaur rocket may test fire its engines on the launch pad for the first time today on May 25th. United Launch Alliance is gearing up for a critical test firing of its next generation rocket after a recent fueling check and it could happen as soon as this week. 
On Monday morning of May 22nd, Bruno stated on Twitter that the company's new Vulcan Centaur rocket was returning to Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Now that the rocket is back at the pad, Vulcan's static fire test in which the rocket's engines are ignited while it remains on the ground could happen any day now. We are targeting as soon as tomorrow for the flight readiness firing, a representative from ULA shared on Tuesday, May 23rd, but it will depend on range availability. On Wednesday, March 24th, Fourth, ULA CEO Tori Bruno intimated on Twitter that the test could happen as soon as Thursday, March 25th. If all goes according to plan and Vulcan static fire and wet dress rehearsal goes smoothly, the rocket's first launch will be its next major milestone. Bruno has previously indicated sometime in June or July as Vulcan's earliest likely launch date, with launch windows available four to five days every month. ULA previously completed a successful tanking test on the company's new Vulcan on May 12th, filling the rocket with over a million pounds of fuel during the test. ULA engineers then evaluated the fueling test results against Vulcan's design expectations. Two days after the successful tanking, Bruno indicated in a May 15th tweet that the tests were good, but that teams would be making some parameter adjustments ahead of Vulcan's first static fire. That milestone moved Vulcan one step closer to its first launch, with only a static test firing of the engines and wet dress rehearsal left to validate the vehicle. And for today's final bit of news, Russia's MS-23 Progress cargo freighter launched Wednesday from Kazakhstan on a mission hauling more than 2.7 tons of fuel, food, experiments, and supplies to the International Space Station. The Progress MS-23 MS-23 supply ship lifted off at 8.56 a.m. EDT from Launch Complex Site-31 at Baikonur, located in a remote part of Kazakhstan east of the Aral Sea. The Soyuz team loaded kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the three-stage rocket in the final hours before liftoff, timed for 5.56 p.m. local time at the spaceport in Central Asia. After liftoff, the Soyuz 2.1A rocket headed northeast to line up with the space station's flight path, then shed its four liquid-fueled boosters about two minutes into the flight. The aerodynamic shroud covering the Progress MS-23 spacecraft jettisoned moments later, followed by separation of the Soyuz core stage nearly five minutes after liftoff. A third-stage engine ignited to finish the job of putting the cargo ship into orbit about nine minutes into the mission. The Progress supply ship separated from the rocket and unfurled its solar panels and navigation antennas and then commenced a sequence of engine firings to adjust its orbit to match that of the space station. After a radar-guided rendezvous, the cargo freighter lined up with its docking port at the Poisk module on the Russian segment of the space station. Docking with the Poisk module occurred at 12.19 p.m. EDT. Russian cosmonauts on the station, part of the lab's long-duration seven-person crew, will open hatches to begin unpacking cargo from the pressurized cabin of the Progress spacecraft. This is the 84th Progress cargo ship to launch to the space station and the mission is designated Progress 84P by NASA. There are currently 11 people on the space station, including the four-person private astronaut mission from Axiom Space that arrived Monday for an eight-day stay. Russia's space agency said the Progress MS-22 cargo ship carries 2,491 kilograms of supplies and fuel to the space station. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.